And joining us now for, dis for a discussion on risk aversion in Africa is Roy Daniels, head of trading at Rand Merchant Bank. Many thanks for coming in. Hello. Risk aversion is one of those debates that never grows old, in as much as it, we may discuss it all the time. How so? Well, you know, I mean, as, as you say, it's something we've discussed on numerous occasions in the past. And, you know, to the point where it's almost sounding boring, but I suppose the levels of the risk aversion change all the time. You know, one day we're looking at something else, another day we're looking at, at other factors in the market. All eyes just remain on Greece um, yes. as to what happens there. You know, we were waiting for the, for the ECB announcements today. Um, came out pretty boring to, to, to uh, say Exactly, that's what I was going to The it ECB, everybody was waiting for it, and then when it came, it came like, all right, is that all? Such high expectations, and they yes. said nothing. Other than to say, look, you know, yes, we're waiting to see what happens further down the road. We're waiting to see what, you know, we're we ready to act. Should we, should we need to act? Our view is that there probably is time to act, but uh, we wait and see. I mean, from a point of view as to what's happening across Africa, if you look at the sort of risk aversion, you know, Nigeria being, being pretty hard hit, hitting, yes. uh, hitting a, um, a five-month high, uh, well, a five-month weakness in the, in the Naira to just over 163, a little bit of central bank intervention, then the day pushed it back down to the 161s. But still struggling. I mean, still investors, you know, fleeing from the market. And because there was talk of the offshore investors especially fleeing that market. Yeah, you know, I mean, when, when you say fleeing, we kind of think of people running for the boats and then heading off back home. Yes. Look, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a move back into, in, into the currencies that, that matter. So move back into dollars. So they're selling off of T-bills. I don't, you know, and, and the NDF market's under a little bit of pressure. That's any real offshore hedging instrument that's available. Um, is it overdone? You know, is it going to recover? I think probably slightly overdone, not, not, not vastly overdone, in line with the rest of the markets, we're seeing the, the levels of, of, of aversion. But again, you know, all roads and, and all views now lead to Athens, and, and now we're all sitting back and, and waiting to see what happens in Greece. You know, there's talks of, of a possible bit of uh, uh, the, the twist out of the states again on, on, the yes. QE, on, on the QE side. Whether that comes about or not, I don't know. We're not hearing anything from them. They are, you know, again, politicians saying we're ready to act. You know, in need. But look, when you when you look at the situation in Spain, you look at the situation in Greece. It's certainly, you know, everyone's now sitting back and waiting. So we're all sitting here waiting to see what someone's going to say. I suppose, principally, what is someone going to do? I mean, the markets are all under pressure at the moment. Let's talk. Let's stay in Nigeria for just a little longer. And uh, for instance, uh, with the lower oil price and everything that's happening, it's, it's not looking very pretty for that country right now. You know. Again, I mean, one refinery in, in, in Nigeria. So, you know, the, the, the export of, of oil and the import of, of fuel, I mean, it's, it's good for them that, that it's lower, that the price of the, of, of the petrol is lower. But again, not, not good things for them. But don't forget that their budget is set off, I, I, I think, in the region of about $65 a barrel. So yes. it's not a train smash for them. Yes, it's, it's going to be under pressure. And, and again, for the rest of Africa, the, the lower oil price, good news. I mean, you know, but for the, for the oil exporters, crude exporters, not such good news. So pressure in, in Nigeria is certainly there. Um, Central Bank, <clears throat> we've been waiting for them to, to, to react and do something. Today they did something. Apparently that there's the exporters are waiting as well, all sitting sitting in the wings with, with dollars to sell. So there is some support for the, for the Naira. Let's move on to East Africa and Kenya. For instance, just yesterday the uh, Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee keeping its uh, benchmark rate unchanged for the sixth straight month at 18.0%. It may have also had some heavy-handed intervention, as you're calling it, in the spot market last week. Yes. Um, Again, I mean, I, I differed from, from our research team. They were calling, yes. they went for unchanged. I thought there was probably room, room for a cut. Um, you know, a shilling that, that's sitting trading at around the 85 levels, it's good and, and it looks good on the inflation side. What is, right. it, what is the impact then on the export side of the business? Is a shilling at, at 88 a better level than, than 85 and a half? And, and again, you know, pundits will, will, will all differ, d differ on what they think is a good level. But I think generally the, the central bank doing a good job. You know, yes, is there room to, to cut rates? Possibly. Is it, is it prudent to not cut rates? Definitely. Um, waiting for inflation to get even further down the road. Inflation's well in check there now. Yes. You consider where, where we were you know, at, at the end of last year, sitting in, 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 in up in the 18, 19, 20% levels of inflation. So with them sitting there and inflation in check, keeping rates in check, I don't think that the, the, the M3 targets and the private sector borrowings have reached the, the, the required levels just yet. So good intervention. Look, it was, I think some of the ba local banks were, were probably caught on, on, on that ways, level yes. of, of, of intervention by the CB. Mm -hmm. But they're doing what they, what they feel is necessary to protect the currency, to, to protect the, the, the inflation. So inflation in Kenya is slowing down, obviously not where you mentioned in the 18-19s where we were last year, but perhaps not slowing down as fast as many people would want. And the, the room to cut interest rates, like you're saying, to cut the CBR, there was definitely room for that. But some people saying now the CBK missed the opportunity. 
Well, you, but are they are they holding back a little bit more just to make sure? You know, we, we're in difficult times at the moment. So when we look at the sort of risk aversion everywhere around the world, when we see the pressure of all the markets in Africa generally, um, they don't want to do something now that they've got to undo later. When we look at the at the Ugandan central bank, yes, because know, it cut rates by 100 basis points. Well, prior to that, it cut by 100, cut by 100, then it had a hike again. Yes. Then it now it's cut again. So mm -hmm. yo-yoing all all over the place. I mean, political pressures right. being I, I think playing a hand in 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 the, nece in the necessitation of the rate cuts, but on a whole. We're heading up to election time in Kenya as well. Yes. Does that play a role in, in the decision making as well? You know, it's we wait and see. But prudent behaviour that I don't think is is terribly out of line. And I suppose you know we sit you now waiting for Greece. So yes. kind of a kuna matara time. Let's sit right. back and, and, and wait Everything and see. Everything is fine. Everything's fine. Let's wait and see what happens in, in, in Greece. And for the central bank in Kenya, fine, it's, it's prudent as you say. But is it overly cautious so that? Um, Yes, let's just keep everything. Uh, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Definitely. I, I, and, and what I'm saying, I mean, I think there's, there, there was room for, for rate cut. I also yes. think there's room for a slightly weaker Kenyan shilling. However, the central bank has its view. And given, given the sort of lack of, of, of activity over last year from the Kenyan central bank, then now, what they're doing now, I think, is making up for some of that, that lack, of, lack of activity. But I think reacting correctly in trying to keep things calm keep things you know, moving along slowly, let's not let anything overheat, yes. let's not undo anything that, that, that we're going to do. So I think the, the approach, cautious and, and well-founded in, in this environment. Let's talk about Uganda because in, despite the central bank they're being a bit more active, the shilling in Uganda also appears to be a bit of a slide right now. Um, it's, not, it's not sliding un uncontrollably, it's, yes. it's not sliding in, into levels that I think we, we need to be nervous. I think that, again, yields are attractive, I think there's a lot of offshore interest in the market, so I'm not, we, we're not that concerned about what, what's happening there. I think on the East Africa side, things, things are well managed. Don't forget, they didn't have any panic reactions as the rest of the East African countries had, had towards the end of last year. So I think, you know, normal, normal business re um, resuming there. The Ghana side, I was again yes. looking a little bit under pressure. So mm -hmm. when we look at what's happening in the Ghana T-bill markets, I mean, expecting offshore interest in, 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 in the auctions doesn't come about. I think the offshore um, um, uh, t take up in the auctions measured around 28%, which is a bit lower than expected. Ghana SETI under slide, central bank got some unsure policy statements. So I think there's a little bit of concern about what's happening in, in, in Ghana. What are emerging markets investors thinking about Africa right now? Wait and see. Um, yields are attractive yes. for, for offshore investors. Certainly, I mean, from a yield point of view, there should be a lot of interest. But given the whole risk aversion, given the whole emerging markets, given the whole global uncertainty of what to do, I mean, guys, have, you know, they, they're taking money and pumping it into, into Germany, you know, buying into the, the, the U.S. Treasuries. Guys are just waiting and see. Should markets calm down? Yes. Should we get some return? Should the Greece situation be, be the, the outcome be acceptable to markets? Should there be some funding for the Spanish banks? Huge benefit for, 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 African, for African countries, definitely. And that's sort of in a, in a roundabout way, Texas back to the ECB today and the little disappointing uh, announcement. That all they said is the Mario Draghi saying the bank will act firmly in a timely manner on inflation, but he has an inflation expectations for the euro area continue to be, quote, firmly anchored and underlying price pressures continue to be subdued. What I, I, I don't know if he does realize that the rest of the world is looking up to him even down here in Africa? Even, even from, from, from Africa, certainly. We're looking at them for some sort of statement that's going to be market supportive. And I think there are one or two sort of anecdotal comments that probably give us some, some hope, that give us a look at it and say, yes, there is a possibility of intervention should it be, re should it be required. But when, what is the should it be required trigger? When is that? Yes. So, so that's, what, that's what the market does. And that's the uncertainty that, that's left with, within the markets. So this wait and see attitude, of course, it depends on what happens in Greece. But if this does continue on for, let's say, indefinitely, will investors at some point say, all right, we better keep doing something. Let's put in money in Ghana and Kenya and whatever else the attractive yields are. Um, if we look at the, the environment over the last six months, you've had, you've had situations where there's been a spike in, in risk aversion. Yes. And then we've seen some money coming back into Africa, then a spike in aversion, guys leave again. You know, fundamentally, the, the, the whole view of what's happening globally hasn't changed that much over the last six months. It's all about Greece, it's all about Europe, it's all about Spain. That hasn't changed to a large degree. So should, should the Greek elections pass and nothing happens and there's no Greek exit and what else, then I think we'll see funds coming back in again. 
you've got to, we have to get the, the, the grease elections out of the way so we remove the sort of the, the real outlying factor that, that could have a major impact in markets. Markets are very nervous. Right. So we need to get these small things out of the way and then we'll see, I, I think we'll see some, some normality return to the market, some calm return to, to the investors because at the end of the day, you've got to provide a return on, on your funds. And, you know, a you know, quarter percent, half a percent is not a return that's acceptable to yes. shareholders. So which are the attractive countries right now outside of South Africa, the ones you have on your dashboard where the yields are attractive and it looks like a, you're ready to put a buy on? Um, we, we continue to like Uganda. Um, we certainly like Zambia. We like Nigeria, but yes. we're a little bit nervous right now. So we're waiting for, for things to calm down there. So Kenya, again, I think, you know, we're seeing things calm. We're a little bit worried about the, the, the amount of liquidity around in, in the local money markets. Yes. We're a bit concerned about the currency. It's a difficult country um, and a difficult investment for non-residents because you can't fund yourself other than being short dollars and long the Kenyan. Now, it's, it's a brave man that's short dollars at the moment. So yes. on, on that front, we've we, we got to be cautious there. But for us, Uganda, Zambia, we like a lot.